Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another video for you and this video actually involves PyPT5 again. Yet this time what we're going to do is we're going to be loading some data from an SQL database, so from an SQL um, table you could say, right into our PyQt5 Q table widget. So if you don't know what a Q table widget is, this is basically what it looks like. Now if you have been to my channel before, you may have seen this table widget uh, previously. I used it in another tutorial where we actually got to know the actual Q table widget and all those things. Now, this that video is not necessarily a prerequisite for this one. All you need to know is actually just to try to understand what a Q table widget is, which is something that I'm going to cover. But basically, it's just a fancy way for us to display tables in a PyQt5 or Python graphical user interface. And what we're going to attempt to do in today's video is load an SQLite table. So I will be using SQLite just to keep, keep things simple. However, you can use uh, your favorite SQL. Uh, maybe MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, or any of those things. So here, we can check out the SQLite table. I have one table in this database, and the table actually represents world cities. So this is something I recently used in one of my projects. Um, it had like all the cities in the world, so you can, you know, scroll down and see it has a bunch of cities and some information about them. So yeah, that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. So this is, uh, sorry, exactly what we're going to be doing. So how are we going to achieve this? So let's see, let's go back to our code and see what's going on. So here in our code, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a PyQt5 application. Now, if you're not familiar with PyQt5, I strongly encourage you to sort of maybe refresh your memory or learn a bit of basics before heading into this video. Mainly just this part about understanding how to launch a PyQt5 Q application. So, even if you don't really know, I'm just going to walk you through this existing code that I have here, and then we're going to build on this code and see how we're going to add the SQLite data. So now, here we have some, you know, standard imports. This is things that we actually need for us to be able to load um, our graphical user interface, to actually launch it an application, and all those things. So the imports are pretty straightforward. You need to import your sys, you need to import um, the PyQt5 Qt widgets, sorry about the noise, you need to import the Q dialog, the Q application, and you need to import this line here, so this load UI function, which is something that we're going to use right here. So you create a class for your current graphical user interface. Basically, what really goes on when you use Qt Designer. So this is actually Qt Designer. Qt Designer is an external tool that you can use with PyQt5, although it's not mandatory. So what do I mean by this? I mean that you can actually design the tables, the labels, the buttons, and all those things right in your Python code without really needing to refer to this designer. However, this designer is a convenient way for us to drag and drop UI elements into our graphical user interface. So you can see now I just added a button. Um, I can add, you know, all sorts of things. So you might already be familiar with this part, but it doesn't hurt to really refresh our memories. And what Designer helps us do is that it saves these files as a table tutorial um, .ui file. So .ui files are you know, products of the Qt Designer. So just keep that in mind. And th these .ui files are actually nothing but XML files. So in the uh, description, I will have a link to the source code, and that's where you can find more information about setting these things up. You can also refer to my channel's PyQt5 tutorials playlist, where you can see different sorts of things like setting up designer and actually using it for the first time if you're still a beginner. But without further ado, let's just go back to the tables and I feel like we've spent enough time on PyQt5. So going back here, what we actually did is um, here, we used the load UI function to actually load this table tutorial.ui into our current class. Now, why do we need a class? The reason that is, is because the class will actually contain the objects in our PyQt5 as actual variables. So we will have a self.table widget, which refers to this table widget right here, whose object name is table widget. Now, now that I have a self.table widget, I can perform other things to it. So one thing I actually went ahead and did is that I set the column width um, for the first, second, and third columns to be, um, let's see here, so we have 250 and 100 and 350. So these are, you know, numbers that you set the way you like, so these are just in pixels. Now, this entire thing here, so this piece of code, will actually enable us to run the application. And let's check it out. 
and we get an empty table with these three columns and there's really nothing there either. So this bar here on the left is actually just a styled uh, part where it's just, just for the looks of it, there's really nothing here. This is just a label as well. So what else do we have? So we have the other parts of the code right here. So here, what we have is the main part of the application. We create a queue application, which is what we are actually used to launch this application. We create a main window, which is an object for this class that we've defined before. And then we add it to a stacked widget. So the, widget, the stacked widget will actually contain all our screens. You can refer to a video I have on going through multiple screens by through a click of a button or something like that. And what we're going to do, we add the main window to our stack. We may set a fixed height and a fixed width. So I just did this here for aesthetics. And then we just have to show it. Finally, all we need to do is we need to execute this application. So I hope this part is clear. For more information on it, you can refer to my more beginner videos. So now that we've actually set the columns here, so we've set the column widths, we can also, also do something that um, we actually want to set the headers. So the headers are these things here. So they are name, age, and address. This is actually because of the older tutorial. So you can find the older tutorial on my channel and you can also find the source code for it in the same GitHub repository. So I might want to change these things. So let's see, self.table widget.set horizontal header labels. And you just have to pass a list to it. So here we have three columns. And in the SQL light, we actually have a name, country, and subcountry. So this priority thing here is actually something I used for a project of mine. You can just ignore it. And yeah, we're so so we're gonna get the city. Let's call it city instead of name. Country and subcountry. So here subcountry refers to like state or something like that. So we've set our uh, header labels. So now you can actually write again if you're interested in seeing how that uh Okay, so horizontal, I misspelled horizontal, let's see. Okay, so we can see city, country, and sub-country. So we can actually, you know what, increase this, and maybe here, you know, make this 250. All right, so now that we've done that, what's our next step? We actually want to load this, da this data from the SQL table, so from our SQLite database, into the PyQt5 Qtable widget. So how are we going to do that? So let's create a function. So let's say self.load data. And then we'll define load data here. So define load data and it's fine. Okay. So now this is the function that we need. Obviously here we're using SQLite. So what we need to do is import SQLite 3. So SQLite 3 is not an external library that you need by any chance. So it's actually built into Python. You can use it directly. So there's no need to install anything. You just have to import it. Next, we're actually going to connect to our SQLite database. So let's say connection is equal to SQLite3.connect. And here we're just going to give it the path or the file name to the database. So you can see here I have data.sqlite. This is actually the file for this specific database that I have put in the PyCharm project. You can also find it in the source code um, as well. So here, what we're gonna do is say data.sqlite. So now I've successfully connected to this database. Then I need a cursor. So the cursor will be like this. Um, the cursor will go through the results of our query and it will execute the query. Then I'm gonna create, um, sorry, okay. I'm going to create an SQL query and what we're going to do for this query is let's say select star from world cities. So the table name is actually, uh, sorry, here, it's actually world cities. So I want to select all of them and there's a lot of cities, so let's maybe limit this to 50. Okay. So now that we actually have our query, all we need to do is actually execute it. So let's see. How are we going to execute this query? What we need to do basically is cur.execute SQL query. And this is how we would execute the query. This would return a cursor as well that we can use to iterate over our results. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over these results. So for row in this. So this is how we're going to iterate. And here is how we're going to put this stuff into the actual 
um, table. So this is how we're going to put it into the queue table widget. Before we do that, it, we have to make sure to do one thing. Let's first, you know what, let's try to print um, row first of all. So I just want to show you that this, you know, query works. Um, okay, load date. I make typos sometimes. So let's see. You can see here that we have all of these, uh, you know, cities, the first 60, uh, 50 cities from the database in probably alphabetical order. So yeah, this is just one thing to keep in mind. Okay, so the queries work. Now, how are we going to translate this and actually store it here in this table? So now I just printed it out into the command line. How am I going to do it to the actual table? So one thing we need to do always is we need to actually set a row count. So I don't know if you noticed, but the table itself will have a row count of zero. If I do not set a row count for the table, that means that the table will still be empty because the row count is zero. So how do I really do this? So let's say self dot table widget dot set row count and we set this row count to be 50. So in this case we have 50 results. Um, you can make this also dynamic through a variable, it really doesn't matter. Now what else we're going to do is that we're gonna create an index. So we're gonna say table index and we're gonna say that it will be equal to zero. And you'll see what I mean by this in a second. So now we're iterating over our results, right? So we're going through each row and our resulting um, cursor from the uh, SQL query. So when we iterate, what we need to do is we need to self.table widget dot set item. So here we're setting a new item to the widget. We want to set this item at table index. So at the row, or let's say maybe table row, you can call this. So table row. We're saying that at row, table row in the, in the table, we actually want to set this item to be zero. Um, sorry, we want to set this item in column zero. And then what we want to do is qt widgets dot q table widget dot, uh, sorry, q table widget item. And now we're actually going to give it a certain string so we can say row sub zero. And what does this all translate to? So what is happening here? What's happening here is that we're going to our table widget. We're setting an item at the row whose number is table row. So obviously this should be incremented at the very end. So let's say table row plus equal one. Why am I doing this? Because if you don't really do this, there will be no way for the uh, PyQt5 to know which row you're actually setting this information to. So here we're saying, you know, at row 23, at row 50, so this is just, this will keep on um, increasing until the results are done. And at column zero means we want to do this at the very first column. So here, this is indexed by zero. So this is column zero, this is column one, this is column two. So then let's say I want to do the same thing for column one and then for column two. So here I'm setting column one and then column two which means that this part, so row sub zero, this is from our SQLite results, right? So row is from our results. Going back here, we can see that, you know, let's say this is a row. Row sub zero is the very first part, the name of the city. Row sub one is the country and row sub two is actually the sub country. So going back here, we can just translate this to row sub one and row sub two. So now that we have this, let's see what would be the result if we were to actually run this piece of code. And here we go. So we have city, country, sub-country, and we can see all of this information that is stored here. Obviously, you can change the amount of information. So here we actually chose 50, and we can see that, you know, we didn't really cover a lot of space, so just a couple countries. But, you know, you can actually, um, you know, get more information from the database. So that's really it on how to load certain data from an SQLite database into a PyQt5 Q table widget. Now I can have more videos and please let me know in the comments if you're interested in a video like that, where the actual query varies according to certain you know, indicators from the PyQt5 graphical user interface. So what do I mean by this? I mean that maybe here we could have a dropdown and the dropdown can select a country and then from we only get all the results for this specific country. So we can do that. Um, please let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in watching that. And yeah, that's really it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you so much and bye-bye.